everyone welcome to your english world i am parul and topic for today is like as a huntsman a metaphorical poem written by a very renown poet of english literature that's edmund spenser so before starting the poem let us discuss about the writer in brief about his writing style and his notable works the 16th century poet belongs to the elizabethan age Spencer used a very distinctive verse style known as Spenserian stanza or Spenserian sonnet. He also used the elements of humanism and renaissance in his poetry. Now, what is humanism? Humanism sought to be the celebration of the worldly entities and it given the importance to the human beings existence. The elements of humanism poetry is the themes like love time youth immortality etc and spencer have used all these themes in his sonnets very wittily five main qualities of spencer's poetry are a perfect melody a rare sense of beauty splendid imagination then a lofty moral purity and seriousness last but not the least is a delicate idealism it is spencer's idealism his love for beauty and the melody which has caused him to be known as poet's poet and this title is given to him by none other than charles lamb one of the famous essayists of english literature some of the important works of edmund spencer include first one colin cloud come home again second is the shepherd's calendar third astrophel which is an elegy and is dedicated to the contemporary poet philip sidney next one is fairy queen fairy queen is an allegoric poem and one of the most important works of english literature last but not the least we will talk about amorthy in which our today's poem like as a huntsman is published This collection of poem was published in 1595 and Amorthy consists of 89 sonnets which makes it the famous sonnet sequence written by Edmund Spenser. Now what is a sonnet sequence? Sonnet sequence or sonnet cycle is a group of poems or sonnets dedicated to a particular person or a particular theme. here when i talk about amorthy this is an italian word which means little gifts and these sonnets are the little gifts gifted to his beloved dedicated to his beloved elizabeth boy forward to today's poem sonnet number 67 like as a huntsman this poem is a metaphorical poem which uses a hunting themed metaphor which was very common in the 16th century england and uses and represents the woman as a deer and the man as a huntsman in a pursuit structure and form of the poem like as a huntsman is a spenserian sonnet which consists of 14 lines including three quatrains and one couplet each quatrain includes four lines and a couplet includes two lines now we will analyze the poem like as a huntsman and let's start with the first quatrain or i should say the first four lines of the poem like as a huntsman after weary chase seeing the game from his escaped away sits down to rest him in some shady place with panting hounds beguiled of their prey in the very first line spencer uses a simile like as a huntsman here he is comparing his situation to a huntsman who is in chase of a deer and our poet spencer is in wants to find his love of the life elizabeth bowed then in the very first line he says that this hunt this game is out of his hand and is very tiresome very 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 weary so now he gives up he wants to rest with his panting horns which means out of breath wild dogs 
panting means out of breath and haunts means the wild dogs here this panting haunts symbolizes his desires his fantasies for his love so here he wants to rest with them under a shady tree who are charmed by seeing their prey that means these fantasies come out seeing the elizabeth bowl but he ha he needs to stop them next four lines are so after long pursuit and vain essay when i all weary had the chase for sock Uh, the gentle deer returned the self same way thinking to quench her thirst at the next brook the first two lines of the second quatrain here suggest that the poet is saying that he is very tired and now this seems to be a very long pursuit he has been chasing his love from a long time and now this seems to be a worthless a vain attempt according to him and he is all ready to give up upon it and suddenly what he says that the deer is back the deer is returned in a self same way that is in a very fearless way in a search of a next brook a stream of uh, water where the deer can quench its threat its thirst now here it is seems also a biblical reference that the next brook here represent brook means water and water is a symbol of purity and the lover the deer is in search of pure love not a forceful love which the poet is trying to imply on the deer or the beloved i should say now let's see about in the third quatrain what the poet says now it's time for the third quatrain so let's read it there she be holding me with milder look sought not to fly but fearless still did, did bend till i in her hand yet half trembling took and with her own good will her firmly tied now in the third quatrain the poet says that the deer is giving him a very milder and a gentle look then the deer is not at all in a hurry to run away seeing the huntsman but he stay it stays still in the next two line the poet says that the the beloved the deer has given its trembling hand with the trust with her its or her own will to the huntsman or to the beloved so that is a firmly tied that means the uh the union has been made the trust is being gained or in a christian uh, allusion we can say that a symbolism can be seen here that as a you know when the poet when we started the poem the poet was trying to get his love by force but then till this time he has realized that like a huntsman he cannot uh, you know forcefully get his love into his life so here he rested he rested his desires and the love in his life is back god has gifted him his love of life so this is the gift of god for his patient now moving to the couplet the last two line of the poem says strange thing me seemed to see a beast so wild so goodly worn with her own will begilled the last two lines the poet says that it is a very strange thing that the first time happened in his life that he has seen a wild beast being tamed or being controlled by its own will and it's a very goodly worn that means there is no force required to won someone's love but its love can be won by love so here our poem ended with a very happy note that the lover and beloved is in a union characteristics of the poem to note it down that here the poem is in a petrarchan model 
but there is a difference between Petrarchan model and the Elizabethan model that here the love is gained at last but this is not with the case in a Petrarchan model where they use the same comparison, the same metaphor of a huntsman and his chase as a lover and his beloved chase but here the huntsman has got his deer and the lover has received the love, attained the love. But in Petrarchan model, it is an unfulfilled love theme. But here, when we talk about Elizabethan model, the love is attained at last. Sonnet number 67 celebrates the love between two people and also the divine love of nature, making it a very beautiful metaphor. Now talking about some literary devices used in the poem, first includes simile. The very first line of the poem as I have already mentioned that has a simile. It's comparing the chase, the pursuit of a lover with a huntsman's chase of a deer or hunting any animal. That's like as a huntsman. Then we can see that the poem is first person perspective it's this line that when it says when I all weary had the chase for saw in the very next line it is used the self same way that is an alliteration when we repeat the same sounding word in the poem is called alliteration the poem also eludes Christianity or the theme of Christianity where the patience is rewarded at last the poem has used enjambment, inversion and symbolism in many sections of the poem and there is abundant use of metaphor. The poem itself is a metaphorical poem as it is comparing the situation of a huntsman and a lover. I hope you like the poem.